Hello and welcome to a video that is not about this machine. This in fact is the machine that we're going to be using to test something else altogether but we'll take a look at that in just a second. It's an interesting machine. I made a video about it a very long time ago from a company called Digipro. It's an EPOS machine which stands for electronic point of sales machine. It's essentially a cash till. There would have been a flat panel monitor on top of this and it would have operated some kind of tray and yeah they make cool little retro gaming machines if you can get one with the right processor and setup which this one has the only reason why i haven't really used it very much it has no cd player but there is this kind of blank at the top which looks like it ought to be able to take a laptop cd drive so i just haven't got around to trying to figure out how to get that one stuck in there somehow so yeah, on the front we've got this cool little flap behind which sits the floppy drive and if we spin it round there's a whole bunch of connectivity on the back there. So we've got some big connectors down at the bottom there um, we've got some kind of very small compact power supply. These machines were designed for low power. AT for the keyboard and PS2 for the mouse, an odd combination. And then we've got some connectivity here. That's for an LCD panel, which I guess is some kind of proprietary connector for kind of sales type systems, I guess. And then we've got a whole bunch of other things which are the kind of things you usually see. We've got a printer port, we've got a whole bunch of serial ports. And in the middle there, we've got a VGA, so there's some kind of onboard graphics as well. We've got space for three full-size expansion cards which is cool so yeah a very interesting little machine even more interesting inside and we'll take a look in a second but before we get too far into the machine we should take a look at the thing that this video is really all about and it's this really unexciting graphics card so this is the ATI Rage Pro or Rage Pro Turbo as it was lately badged slightly controversially and yeah you can see that we've got the Rage Pro PCI chipset this was one of the early AGP cards I believe uh, but this one's a PCI one so yeah it's just as well because this machine does not have a PCI slot so what we'll really be looking at today is this, it's the memory expansion port and I've always kind of wondered, you know, you, you got all my S3 cards and stuff, they all have these memory sockets for expanding the RAM on there and I just wondered, I've never really done it or bothered with it, just what difference it makes. So that's what this video is going to be about, we're going to upgrade this, up, upgrade the card's memory and see if it makes any difference whatsoever. So because this one's got this kind of laptop style memory kind of sodium style chips it's a bit more interesting than the usual kind you get on your s3 cards and what have you i thought i'd choose this also with it being a very early 3d card it means we can have a little bit of a look at some 3d games as well though historically anybody who messes around with old computers knows that the 3d performance of these cards was less than stellar but yeah i just always wondered what difference does it make to add one of these memory modules because I imagine they cost a reasonable amount of money and if you're a gamer you know when I see an empty slot on one of my machines or an empty socket I always want to put something in it and so that would have bugged me and made me want to go out and buy RAM had I had one of these cards <laughs> luckily I didn't so it wasn't a problem back in the day so this Rage Pro was launched in 1997 and this machine is from 1997 or the chip is the cpu which we'll take a look at in a second so they're kind of fairly contemporary generally speaking these rage pros were sold with oem systems and not really aimed at gamers more for family pcs and that kind of thing and on paper it was supposed to roughly equate to the performance of uh, the original voodoo and these things were rated to use DirectX 6 but before we get into benchmarking and stuff like that, let's take a look at this very, very cool little machine. Impractical, but cool. So these things crop up on eBay from time to time. And they're usually ludicrously cheap. I think this one was only about £30. And the sum of the components are worth more than that. You probably pay 
maybe not much less than that just for the CPU alone. Never mind the hard drive. It didn't come with a sound card or anything, but yeah, the way it's built is really, really quite interesting. So yeah, it's a really interesting machine. We've got like a double-sided motherboard with this kind of this kind of riser on the side. We've got one expansion slot on the bottom and one two expansion slots on the top. On the underside is where the business bits of the motherboard are. So we've got a memory two slots in an interesting space saving configuration and then we've got this very very cool heat pipe cooling setup for the cpu so it's a big long plate with a cooling pipe running through the middle of it it's all very low power and all very quiet and underneath there is an idt winship c6 running at 200 megahertz with mmx a reasonably performing chip as long as you don't go anywhere near floating point maths but we're going to run Quake on this, so we'll probably just see how it gets on there as well. So we've got a chipset under there from ALI, which is cool. We've got a whole mass of jumpers. Never seen so many jumpers on a motherboard. I guess this is all configuration for the the cash till side of things, which I do actually have the manual for this somewhere. I haven't really read it in any detail, but I don't think this kind of stuff is particularly interesting to me as a retro gamer. And yeah, it's a very cool compact system so this, yeah those jumpers really are spread everywhere you can see all the red things in the middle there we've got what i was a bit confused about at first because it's got a ward bios written on there but it looks like a dallas real-time clock to me and then it finally clicked the little chip to the right of it is actually the bios but it's obviously not big enough to put a sticker on so they stuck the sticker over the dallas real-time clock bit of a pain it would be tricky to take this thing apart and get underneath it to put it in a socket i think i don't know i might have a look at that at some point in the future then we've got onboard graphics which we don't really care about at the minute because we're going to be putting the ati card in there shortly but that's why i was saying this thing is a good dos gamer we've got a decent serious logic card with one meg of ram there so it'd be pretty good for 2d and dos games i think just without even a graphics card and yeah look at that look at that big long cooling system for the cpu that is well cool so it's probably been a good while since i've actually turned this machine on better just check that it works sounds promising it's posting and yeah That's cool. CMOS battery failed, so we just skip by that. And it still has Windows 98 on it, which is kind of what I was hoping. So I don't have to reinstall it again. So whatever's on here, if it's got Windows 98, I'll just clean it up and it should be good for this test. Everest Home Edition was on there already, which is cool. So we can see we've got Windows 98 SC. DirectX 6, we've got the ALI Aladdin 3 chipset, there's our IDT Winship C6 running at 200 megahertz, and the Cirrus Logic currently running the graphics with its one meg of RAM. So yeah, like I was saying, it's a nice little system for a DOS machine. If I can figure out a way of getting a CD-ROM in there, I'd probably use it a lot more. We don't really care but i do want some sound in there so i shall stick this sound blaster 16 in the reason why i'm doing that is i noticed that it must have had a sound blaster 16 in this the last time i used it because the drivers were all installed already so ct 2940 all i should have to do is stick the card in and it should just work so the plan is is to run a bunch of synthetic benchmarks and also some gaming benchmarks try and mix it up a little bit so that there's some DOS stuff, some 2D stuff and also try some 3D stuff. So I'm thinking, like I said, I might give it a go at Quake. I don't really want to run into any scenario. Well, I don't expect to be running into any scenarios where um, where the we're going to be needing to worry about V-Sync or <laughs> getting up to 75 frames a second. So yeah that should be not a problem this creative card actually won't go in that bottom slot because the fan's too high the fan's in the way i guess you could get move that fan somewhere else but i'll put the 
ATI card, it, it, this is with its four megs, which is what comes with the card. The expansion SODIM is all, another four megs. So this is four megabyte version that we'll benchmark first and then we'll stick the upgrade in and see if it makes any difference when we run the benchmarks again. So I was relieved when the post screen came up. I wasn't sure whether this thing would auto detect a change of graphics card or whether it would expect me to get the manual out and figure out whether one of those jumpers disabled the onboard graphics but yeah it knows it's got the the rage pro in there now and it's building up quite nicely so good to go of course windows 98 is late enough to know all about the rage pro so the graphics drivers were detected and loaded automatically though i'm not going to use those i do have uh a rage disc quite a late one from ati that has much later drivers on it so we'll be installing those and seeing how we go with that i know that there are very specific drivers for these cards that will allow you to disable vsync uh, neither sets of drivers that i had allowed that as i said i don't think it's going to be a problem with this card i don't think you're going to get anywhere near 75 frames a second in anything that i plan to throw at it so how are we going to bench? We're going to bench using 3D Bench. And having said that, I don't think there's anything that would maybe hit the frame limit for VSync. This might be the one, but we'll see how it goes. And then we're going to run the Quake time demo. And we're going to do that both in software and also in GL Quake as well to see how it handles the floating point stuff. And then we're going to run 3D Mark 99. <laughs> this was actual footage of the bench, so you can already see signs of how this is going to go. And then we're going to run Final Reality. So this is actually a DX5 bench, I think, so hopefully it should do all right in that one. And then we're going to do Expendable. I also benchmarked Doom, but forgot to film it. So yeah, that's going to be what we're going to bench with. You'll have to wait the excitement builds before I reveal the results. Having run those benchmarks on the 4 meg, I then whipped the card out and put the 8 megs of RAM into the card and then put that back into the machine. So from what I gather <laughs> everywhere, that essentially this upgrade is really only going to help you with 2D. It might unlock some more... Some more resolutions for you. I don't think this card should be bottlenecked in any way by the CPU. Uh, the other thing that it potentially might do is it would increase the frame buffer so you theoretically have more textures stored in there so games should potentially run a little bit faster. Um, the other thing that I think I read that adding memory like this can do is widen the memory bus. Sometimes it uses the additional memory to widen the memory bus in some way so who knows we'll find out in just a second so once the card was back in with eight megs i booted it up and i was trying to find a way to verify that it was actually there you couldn't see it in the ati drivers everest home didn't detect it but eventually i found something that did tell me and you can see there 8192 kilobytes so it definitely knows that it's been upgraded and it's got eight megs of ram so cool so then we ran all the benchmarks again and yeah we're over and done with now so we can take it out again and let's take a little look at the results and see what this massive upgrade did. So we begin with 3D Bench and look we get a score of 147.4 with the 4 megabyte card and then we put the other module in and we get a score of 147.1. So I think we can safely say that it made no difference with that simple 2D test, which is a bit disheartening, really. So moving on to Quake. Four megabytes gives us 7.5 frames a second, which is rubbish. Hardly surprising, I guess, given that might be the CPU that's causing the tr trouble there. And yeah, look at that. Exactly the same benchmark with 8 megs so again no difference whatsoever 
On to Doom, and with 4 megs, we got a decent frame rate, 53 frames a second. We thought this card would be good for DOS games and 2D games, and it seems to be that way. Stick in another 4 megs, and you get 53 frames a second. So it's almost like the card doesn't even know it's been upgraded. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I've got a tough card, but what a disappointment. So move on to 3D Mark 99. <laughs> this is not real gameplay. You saw that before. But yeah, we've got a 3D Mark score of 512 with the 4 megs. And then in this case, upgrading it to 8 megs gave us 570. So there's definitely something changed. That is uh, an increase of what? About 58 or something like that. So yeah, there's something going on. We're just not seeing it when we're playing games. On to Final Reality, and 4 megs here gives us a Final Reality score of 1.62, and then when we upgrade to our 8 megs, we get a Final Reality score of 1.62. So it's like it isn't really affecting the 3D side of things, I don't think. I don't know whether they think games like Doom are just so CPU-reliant, it doesn't really care about the memory, uh, don't, don't really know, but so far, apart from in 3D Mark 99, it's made no difference whatsoever. Move on, second last benchmark, Expendable, and with 4 megs of RAM, we get 6 frames a second. This game was clearly beyond, beyond the card. Adding in another 4 megs of RAM gives us 6 frames a second, so yeah, it's making virtually no difference whatsoever in the gameplay, and apart from 3D Mark 99, you'd never know that it had been done at all. So finally we ended up with GL Quake, this was just using the GL Quake version released by id back in the day, so we were getting 6.4 frames a second with 4 megs, so it's slightly faster than the software version, but then look at this, 8 megs. 15.1 frames a second so is that because it's taken advantage of all of the the extra frame buffer for storing textures and things i have no idea but that was the only significant jump i saw and it was a still totally unplayable 15 frames a second but it was a significant jump of yeah nearly three times what it was with four megs so yeah what to say about this little experiment is it was just out of curiosity i thought i might as well video it while i'm doing it you would have been disappointed if your parents had bought you a four megabyte upgrade for your rage pro back in the day if that was all you had in the family pc that's all i can say so that pretty much wraps things up it was just a little experiment a bit of fun i've always been kind of curious and yeah <laughs> it's totally disappointing. I did forget to video and mention that I checked in Windows to see if any extra resolutions were unlocked, and unfortunately there weren't. So you were just stuck with what you had with 4 megs, even if you did add in another 4 megs. So it was all a bit of a non-event. But it was fun having a little look, and now I will never be worried that I haven't filled any of those empty sockets and slots in any of my old graphics cards ever again. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uneventful video, so <laughs> sorry if it was so boring. I'll try and find something more interesting to do the next time. But yeah, it was just a little curiosity thing, and now I know, yeah, pointless. Maybe there were some niche scenarios in which it did make a difference. Maybe some more productivity productivity oriented things like CAD and stuff I don't know anyway that's it for this video it's a bit of a sad disappointment I was hoping to get a few more frames out of the various games but that didn't happen so that's it until next time I hope you enjoyed watching this boring video that proved absolutely nothing uh, next time we'll try and find something a bit more interesting to do thanks for watching if you made it this far and I hope to see you in the next video bye